Welcome to our lecture online. I think you're beginning to see the pattern now, but we'll do one more. Here now we have the quantity a plus bx to the third power in the denominator. We we'll use the same technique, and now you'll see how we can expand upon that. If it's to the fourth power, fifth power, makes no difference. We can see, show you how to take care of integrals like this. So first of all, again, we're going to make some substitutions. We're going to let u equal a plus bx. That means du is equal to b dx, or dx is equal to du over b, and we're going to need this and this substitution in our integral. But then we have one more. We need to take care of dx, and to do that, we're going to say, uh, we're going to take this equation right here and write u minus a equals bx, or x is equal to u minus a divided by b. And we can also substitute this for the x in the integral sign. Now let's see what we're going to end up with. So this is equal to dx now turns into du divided by b. So the b goes in the denominator here. We'll take it outside the integral sign. The x will become u minus a. So we have u minus a. And uh, divided by b, which goes in the numerator, we can put it outside. And then we have this in the denominator, that is u cubed in the denominator. So the b's cancel out here. So now we've turned this into an integral like this, which doesn't seem to help us too much. But then we can use integration by parts. What we can do is we can take this here, write it as 1 over u minus a times u cubed. And this can be written as a divided by u minus a plus b over u plus c over u squared and plus d over u cubed. And then if we multiply both sides by the common denominator, which is u minus a times u cubed, we end up at 1 equals a times u cubed plus b times u minus a times u squared plus c times u minus a times u and plus d times u minus a. And then to see how we can figure out what a, b, c, and d are, we're going to need to multiply everything out to see what we get here. 1 equals a u cubed plus b u cubed minus b a u squared plus c u squared minus c a u plus d u minus d a. And notice on the left side we don't have any u cubed, so therefore we can say that 0 is equal to a plus b, or a equals negative b. And then here we have a u squared and a u squared, so we have 0 because we have no u squares on the left side, so 0 equals minus b a plus c. We don't have any u's on the left side, so on the right side we can say z, a 0 is equal to uh, d minus c a. And finally we do have a constant on the left side, so we can say that 1 equals minus d a or d is equal to minus 1 over a. So we have a value for d. Now we can plug that in here, and we can see that c is equal to d divided by a, and since d is minus 1 over a, this is equal to minus 1 over a squared for c. And over here we can say that um, b is equal to c divided by a, and c is 1 over a squared, so this is minus 1 over a cubed b, and since a is the negative of b, a is equal to a positive 1 over a cubed, which means we can put in the values of a, b, c, and d into here, and this can replace this inside the integral sign, so this can now be written as the integral of a over u minus a, but a is 1 over a cubed. I think I'm going to pull that outside the integral sign, the 1 over a cubed. So I have 1 over a cubed times the integral of a over u minus a, and I pulled out the 1 over a cubed, so this becomes 1 over u minus a. And then for b, I have a minus 1 over a cubed, so I can pull that out as well. This becomes 
minus 1 over u. And for c, I have minus 1 over a squared, so this becomes minus a over u squared. And then finally, d is minus 1 over a, so that becomes minus a squared over u cubed. And the whole thing times a du. So I made it easier by simply pulling out a 1 over a cubed already. So that gets rid of this 1 over a cubed, gets rid of that is over 1 over a cubed. This was 1 over a squared, so I'll leave an a. This was 1 over a, so I'll leave an a squared. But now I can go ahead and integrate those quite easily. Another thing I could do is I could write this as u to the minus 2 and write this as u to the minus 3 to make it a little bit easier again to see this like that and write it over 1 so that makes it again easier to integrate. Okay, let's go ahead and integrate now. We have 1 over a cubed times, this is the natural log of u minus a, minus the natural log of u, and here we have minus a times u to the minus 1 over negative 1, the new exponent, minus a squared times u to the minus 2 over negative 2, the new exponent, and we'll have a constant of integration. Now simplifying a little bit more, we can combine these two. This is equal to 1 over a cubed times the natural log of u minus a divided by u. And here the negatives cancel out, so it would be plus a over u. And here the negatives cancel out, that would be plus a squared over 2u squared. Okay, and a constant of integration. And finally, we can replace back what u is equal to, because u is a plus bx. So we get 1 over a cubed times the natural log of, now a minus bx minus a, that's simply bx in the numerator, divided by u, which is a plus bx, plus a over u, which is a divided by a plus bx, plus a squared over 2 times a plus bx quantity squared plus a constant of integration. And this is the correct result of that particular integral. Now again, you may look in the back of an integral table or back of the book and you may not get exactly the same result, but again, using the right algebraic tricks, you can make this look like any answer you'll find in the back of any book. And that's how it's done.